Hey everybody, and welcome to another Redline video. In this video, we're gonna take another look at the quote-unquote Redline XR, and uh, we're gonna take a look at the options that it comes set up as, and take a look at the times when it may actually be a good idea to change those settings depending on uh, what you're encountering. So um, just to refresh real quick what the Redline XR is, it's a completely 100% normal Redline, and somebody has gone in and pre-programmed a couple settings. They've marked it up another $100. They called it something else, a Redline XR, instead of a, a Redline with a couple settings changed. And then they sell it. The settings are actually really good settings. Uh, I would agree that these are fantastic settings, absolutely. And for most people, most of the time, they really are the best ones to go. So without necessarily knowing you know, what people are encountering, this is actually going to cover the majority of the people and really be the best settings to set up. So I've got no problem in, with that area. Uh, the thing is, depending on where you are, sometimes it may actually make sense to change some of the settings so that you get better performance or reduced falsing or whatever, even beyond what's covered here with these settings. So that's what we're going to go ahead and take a look at now today. The times and uh, specifically the situations why you may want to consider changing some of the settings that it comes set up with. So let's just go ahead and run through the settings. The way it would come recommended would be running it in auto sensitivity. Auto is really good for helping deal with a lot of false alerts on K-band uh, and X-band particularly in town. Uh, some of the low, you know, kind of weak signals. If you're out on the highway, it comes with a highway option. And you can always switch it to highway mode if you're running it as primarily a highway detector, which really is what the Redline's forte is. It's highway performance. And it's okay in the city. There are other detectors that may do a better job of handling false alerts in the city. But when it comes to raw, all-out performance, that's what the Redline is all about. And so if you're on the highway, you can definitely switch to highway mode. You are going to get additional false alerts, particularly on K-band. So... If you're okay with a few or more false alerts, I would definitely give this a shot, especially once you get away from city traffic. Once you're out, you know, traffic starts to die down a bit, definitely look into switching it to highway mode. That'll be good, particularly if K-band is used in your area. Uh, it's not going to affect KA-band at all, so don't worry about auto or highway affecting that. It's strictly X-band and K-band. The next thing is having X-band turned off. For the majority of the country, X-Band is not in use. However, there are a couple places in the country where X-Band is still alive and well. For example, uh, Ohio is a classic example. New Jersey as well. Uh, Southwest Oregon along I-5, people have reported X-Band in use there. So there's a couple places in the country uh, here and there where X-Band is still in use. What I would recommend is go take a look at the RDFGS which is an acronym for the Radar Detector Forum Geographical Survey. And that's a place where people will go and they'll actually report what they see and where, uh, what frequencies, what guns are in use, etc. And that way you can go and see what other people are saying is in use in your area. So that's a great way to go and find out if X-Band is in use uh, where you live. Um, there are some mistakes here and there, you know, that happens. But, uh, you know, guns change. You know, they used to see stuff seven years ago, and it still says that there, but they don't use those guns anymore, that kind of stuff. So it's not going to be 100% totally accurate, but it's an excellent place to start. And it's probably the best resource that I found for figuring out what's in use where. So with that said, if X-Band is in use in your area, obviously you may want to consider turning that on. If it's not, turn it off. It'll help with false alerts. Good idea. Uh, the next one, RDR, uh, radar detector rejection. It helps with false alerts at the expense of reduced performance. Uh, pretty much just leave it off as recommended. That's definitely a good idea. If for whatever reason you're getting a lot of KA falses, um, which you're not because of the way that we have uh, segmentation set up, you can consider turning it on. But really just leave it off and yeah, there you go. Next, we're going to talk about band segmentation on KA band. Uh, the recommended settings here are to run only segments 2, 5, and 8 on and to turn everything else off. The idea here is that you're going to be improving performance and reducing false alerts. Because you're only going to be scanning a few segments within the entirety of KA band and not scanning the entire range, you're going to be uh, speeding up the detector because it's not wasting time scanning unnecessary frequencies. This is going to give you better performance. It's going to do a better job at alerting to really brief signals because it's much more likely to be scanning you know, when the signal is present rather than wasting time scanning somewhere else. 
Uh, it's going to give you longer range. And also, because you're not scanning those frequencies where false alerts can happen, uh, that will also help minimize false alerts on KA band, which is especially nice considering the fact that we just turned off RDR, which is designed to help with the false alerts on KA band from other cheap radar detectors. Uh, the recommended settings are 2, 5, and 8, but you may want to run something differently. And so let's go over uh, why that may be the case. So 2, 5, and 8 is designed for 338, 34, 7, and 35, 5. It's designed for guns that are in spec, that are calibrated and certified, and are legal to issue tickets. Uh, guns do drift over time, and then they can actually drift in frequency beyond where they're supposed to be. They're kind of outside of you know, their range where they're certified to transmit. If this happens and those guns are being used to issue tickets, you can get clocked by one of these and your detector will not alert if you have it segmented in this way, two, five, and eight. So what some people will do knowing that is they'll actually begin enabling additional segments. Uh, to give you an idea, um, some examples. Uh, in New York, people have been reporting that some of these stalker guns, which are normally 34.7 plus minus 100, so 34.6 to 34.8, kind of that range, uh, some of them are actually running high up into 34.8 plus range. And in order to alert to these guns, you do need to be running segment 6. Uh, similarly, in Edmonton, in Canada, some people have been reporting some photo radar units transmitting in the 34.5 range, uh, 34.580, 0.595, that kind of stuff. Some is right on the edge of segment five. Some you'd actually need to enable segment four enable to, or in order to have your detector uh, alert to those frequencies. Uh, here in Washington, where I live, there's a part of town where there's an off-frequency older stalker ATR, which transmit not at 34.7, but actually at 35.2. And so if I want to be able to catch this gun, I have to enable segment seven. And so, you know, hearing this, you may think, well, this is kind of crazy. Like if I want my detector to detect all potential alerts, I'm going to go ahead and enable these additional segments. Uh, I was out driving the other day with the red line. And so I enabled, you know, segments two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just did a whole bunch and said, you know, haven't done this in a while. Let's do this. Uh, what I found is, you know, because RDR was turned off, I started getting false alerts on KA band. I got one at 34.420, really random frequency, which was in segment four, and another one at 35.353, which was up in segment seven. And so you've got that risk again of, you know, like, okay, yeah, you can detect more guns, but you're going to start getting a bunch of false alerts. And so that comes back to, you know, do I turn on RDR and turn on more segments, but then I got the performance drop versus do I recommend or do I run these recommended settings of RDR and two, five and eight, you know, and that's where it starts to become a judgment call. Um, again, playing with RDR and band segmentation is designed to be an expert setting. It's best to really understand how this stuff works, what it's doing and really what the risks are. So that's what we're going over here. So you could turn on additional segments, but if you're not really sure what you're doing, generally, it's usually recommended for most people in most situations to, you know, just run 2, 5, and 8. Uh, I have no idea what's in use everywhere in the world and everywhere in the country. I can't tell you, based on where you live, what you should be doing. Um, you know, different people have reported different things, and based on that, cool. But you can always take the risk and enable additional segments and start looking for out-of-tune guns if you wish. Um, I generally wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you're really, you know, into this sort of thing, you know, go for it. One thing I do want to comment about that is if you decide to enable additional segments, uh, you probably will start getting alerts on those frequencies like, you know, it happened to me. If you get an alert, do not assume by default that it's an out-of-tune gun. Chances are, you know, just by probabilities and all, chances are it's going to be a false alert. If you get just a blip of a signal, a couple beeps, and it goes away, probably a false, a Cobra driving by, that kind of thing. If you're able to actually confirm that that signal is coming from a police officer, like that signal gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and then goes full tilt, and all of a sudden you see a cop drive by, and then the signal starts to get weaker and weaker and weaker, like if you get that kind of a ramp up and you're able to see the, you know, the police car or even if you can see the radar gun and you can tell exactly what it is, that's different. So generally speaking, all things being equal, if you get an alert on one of these off frequencies, it's probably a false alert. So if you can confirm that it's a cop, cool. But 
There you go. Um, on the flip side, instead of turning on additional frequencies, it may also be beneficial to turn off some of these frequencies, like 2, 5, and 8. Um, for example, uh, here where I live in Washington, they run you know, all three of those, so I need to leave all three on. Uh, in some places, like in California, and most places in California, they run just KA band, specifically 34.7, and laser. Um, you know, this isn't the case everywhere, but if you know for sure that all that's in use in your area is 34.7, for example, uh, you could consider turning off segment 2, and that will also help additionally with uh, Cobra falses. And the reason I say that is uh, those 33.8 signals, Cobra falses oftentimes can happen in the range of 33.6, 33.7, 33.8. They can happen up there. And if you're able to turn off segment 2, you're going to eliminate many Cobra falses, which is really, really helpful. So you may also want to consider turning off some bands. But again, like I said, if you do this, you are absolutely preventing your detector from alerting to where legitimate police radar can be. And so because this is an expert setting, you know, do it at your own risk and understand what it is that you're doing. It's not something designed for newbies. Um, again, if you're not sure what you're doing, just run 2, 5, and 8, and for most people, you're good to go. So that's kind of the story there on uh, band segmentation. And finally, the last one, TSR, traffic sensor rejection. Basically what that is, is enabling a delay on K-band of about two-thirds of a second so that any signal shorter than that in duration, you'll get no alert. If it's longer than that in duration, you'll get an alert. Uh, this has an impact on performance negatively, but it also helps deal with a lot of falses, specifically from traffic sensors on the highway, hence the name traffic sensor rejection. One of the nice side effects of this is by introducing that delay, it also helps minimize a lot of the blind spot falses that you'll get from other cars. Uh, it's not totally foolproof, you know, like some Chevys, some GMCs and stuff will still cause false alerts on K-Band, even if you have TSR on, but it is very, very helpful against a lot of blind spot falses. And so I typically run actually with TSR turned on because it's been so beneficial, even though they do run low powered K-Band here where I live. Uh, TSR on is really helpful for falsing. So if you're getting a lot of false alerts, uh, especially, you know, in town, in a big city where there's a lot of cars, that kind of stuff, TSR on really does help. If you get out in the boonies somewhere, out in the forest, in the mountains, small town, that kind of stuff, TSR off and uh, you'll get better performance and better reactivity that way. So yeah, there you go. There is a look at why it actually may be a good idea to change some of the recommended settings in the quote unquote Redline XR. Uh, you know, those are just the recommended settings that a lot of people will give you, not knowing anything specifically about your area, what you encounter, and really what your needs are. They're kind of a, they're an improvement over just factory defaults, and they're kind of a nice overall general recommendations for most people. But uh, as you learn a little bit more about your detector and you also learn what's used in your area, you can then really start to dial in and tweak the detector to maximize its capabilities and performance specifically for what you need. So there you go. Hope that's been helpful and I will see you guys next time.